Now the next talk is uh, by Dr. Anzi Nagpal. She's there? Anisa. Anita Nagpal. Anisa. A-N-I-Z. Anisa Nagpal, yeah. And she will be talking of rare case report of chronic myeloid leukemia presenting as unilateral optic neuropathy. Sorry, Anisa, for wrong pronunciation. No, no. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm present. I'm Dr. Aniza Nagpal from AIMS Bhopal. I'm presenting a rare case report of a, a chronic myeloid leukemia presenting as unilateral optic neuropathy. A 50-year-old, 55-year-old patient came with a chief complaint of diminution of vision for three days, which was sudden, painless, and progressive. It was not associated with any other symptoms. Patient was non-diabetic and hypertensive for five years. And uh, on ocular examination, the right eye had the vision of 624 with dyschromatopsia. And on swinging flashlight test, there was an RAPD of grade 2 in the right eye, while the left eye was within normal limit, and rest of the interior segment findings were normal. On the fundus examination, there was marked disc edema and uh, the disc margins were blurred with disc elevation. There was also venous toxicity and peripapillary hemorrhages seen along the inferior temporal and inferior nasal arcades in the right eye, while the left eye was within normal limit and uh, left eye fundus was normal. This is the, and the uh, Ossity RNFL thickness was uh, 245 in the right eye uh, in contrast to 97 micrometer in the left eye. And this is the 3D evaluation which is showing marked di disc elevation and then on blood investigation a provisional diagnosis of non-arthritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy was made based on his uh, systemic risk factors of diabetes and hypertension as well and the CBC was uh, with ESR and CRP were advised to rule out arthritic uh, AIN. Uh, ESR and CRP came out to be normal but the CBC was highly raised with blast cells 6%, myelocytes 16% and metamyelocytes 11% suggestive of myeloproliferative disorder. Therefore to rule uh, therefore, B uh, BCL ABR rearrangement PCR test was done, which came out to be highly positive, and the bone marrow biopsy was done, which confirmed the diagnosis of chronic myeloid leukemia. So, therefore, the treatment with tyrosine kinase inhibitor was started along with supportive treatment, and the MRI and brain uh, with brain and orbit was done to rule out the CNS involvement, and then. The MRI, uh, axial section of T2 weighted MRI with fat suppression of the orbit showed uh, a normal MRI with no CNS involvement and the lumbar puncture uh, revealed clear CSF fluid with normal constitution and no atypical or blast cells were found. On follow-up visits, after two weeks of initiation of chemotherapy, there was reduction in disc edema, decrease in the RNFL thickness and improvement in visual equity to 612. But the patient stopped dematinib, uh, was stopped due to thrombocytopenia and uh, which led to the development of edema in the opposite eye as well after a one week of cessation of chemotherapy. The lumbar puncture was done to rule out raised ICT. The lumbar puncture with CNSS manometry revealed CSF opening pressure of 150 uh, uh, mm of water with clear CSF and not atypical or blast cells. This is the fundus picture where there is a, a presence of disc edema and peripapillary hemorrhages in the right eye where with initiation of edema in the left eye as well. Then on uh, consultation with the oncologist, the imatinib was restarted. After another two weeks, the patient had significant reduction in TLC and resolution of the optic nerve had edema in both eyes. On follow-up visit at six weeks, the BCVA in the right eye improved to 6.9 and 6.6 uh, uh, six, six in the left eye. The color vision came back to normal and the fundus uh, disc margin became clear, became clear with generalized disc pallor in the right eye and superior disc pallor in the left eye. And OCT RNFL also showed decreased RNFL thickness in both eyes. These are the visual field testings which is showing uh, the, uh, the patient's uh, visual field was affected with visual field loss and um uh, discussion optic nerve involvement is commonly seen in patients with leukemias however it is rare to see an isolated optic nerve involvement as a presenting feature our case reports one such rare scenario where the blood investigations done after the patient presented with the unilateral optic disc edema paved the way towards the timely diagnosis of cml in its chronic phase itself therefore it is important uh, and it is also important to distinguish the different etiopathologies of uh, optic nerve involvement for the cost specific management uh, then optic nerve, uh, then a conclusion, CBC is an important diagnostic consideration in patients who present with optic disc edema, which might pave way towards its systemic association. And patients with ophthalmic man manifestation have reported to have lower five-year survival rates. Therefore, patients with leukemia must be screened for ophthalmic manifestations as it changes the prognosis and requires prompt management. Timely management directed towards the cause can help us improve the disease outcome. Thank you.
You did not show any MRI showing the infiltration of the optic nerve or anything. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think was causing that optic nerve? Sir, uh, uh, in CNS, uh, uh, there is just a second. Sir, actually the uh, optic neuropathy in uh, CML can be due to inflammatory regions, uh, can be due to uh, uh, infiltration, can be due to ischemia or can be due to the uh, side effects of tyrosine kinase. So what happened in your case? Yeah. Sir, I most likely suspect to be an ischemic cause because due to the, uh, when we uh, did see the CBC, the, the CBC was highly raised and due to hyperviscosity syndrome, the para-optic uh, branches must have been uh, led to the ischemia of the optic nerve head. Uh, can you show the fundus picture again you did not show she didn't show the yeah presentation you did not show us. yeah that fundus picture i did not have yes you should have it. yeah definitely the most important uh, aspect and you yeah. diagnose the non arteritic uh, optic uh, mm. neuropathy so yes. that was also important to see look at the, that picture yes sir because the picture quite often is quite uh, characteristic and yes. will give it away because the treatment would have had changed if it would have, would have been an optic nerve infiltration then the intrathecal chemotherapy has to be started. Yes. Also, uh, the visual field effects also are showing that the visual field loss is more uh, pronounced in the inferior half. Uh, and uh, ischemia of paraoptic branches, like due to hyperviscosity and anemia, like uh, could be the cause of segmental involvement of the inferior optic nerve and uh, to further progress to involve the superior field as well. Therefore, most likely. But you have not been able to produce any evidence. Your evidence is indirect. It is yes. more of sort of. Yes, speculation. It, is it, it is more of speculative. Yes, that is my difficulty in this kind of situation. Yeah. Able to produce. Sir, but there were no signs of infiltration, and also there was no CNS involvement, both on MRI and lumbar puncture. Yeah, lumbar puncture, you said CSF, they were not showing any cells and yes. infiltration. So Usually it is not infiltrated. In AML cases it is infiltrated. Mm -hmm. and we have seen unilateral. Yeah. Those are other reasons are more speculative and actually because we need some evidence. Yes, sir. Anyway, it is very interesting presentation. Thank you so much. Yes. And you did not do any protein angiography to show any disc vessels and you did not. Disc staining was seen on Okay. It could have been done. Because of the positive of only 12 slides were allowed, so I did not include it. No, but you should include slides which are more important. That is what is to be learned. Thank you.